Welcome to the Forces of Flight video presentation and lesson plan. My name is Steve Warner. If we're meeting for the first time, um, my specialty is STEM education. We are going to be going through the lesson plan today of the aerospace education program for Forces of Flight. If you uh, have been taking the other courses and other uh, videos that I put out there, you know that this is part of a multi-video series on aerospace and rocketry and all kinds of things that we're going to be doing with STEM education. And we're going to get right into the forces of flight presentation and how the four forces affect a plane in flight. So first of all, why do we teach aerospace education? What is the purpose behind it? Well, if you're like me or you have a student or a child like myself, um, Back in the day, I loved taking things apart. I loved putting things back together. I uh, loved work, like working with my hands and, and trying to figure out how things would move and things would, you know, get up in the air and all kinds of things. So for those who enjoy those kind of things, putting things in motion, aerospace engineering kind of strikes a chord. It's kind of like, you know, when you're observing that satellite for the first time on TV and you're watching a Martian atmosphere or a moon landing or something like that. Uh, turbine engines that are being put onto an airliner and, and how do they actually work and what do they do? Um, using fixtures for testing performance, watching different things fly and um, things that float on the water. And, you know, how do these things work and, and what does it take to do these kind of things? Well, we're going to be exploring part of that in this lesson plan. So where do aerospace engineers work? Well, a bunch of different places. And this is only a kind of the top five, but think about NASA. NASA's been in the news a lot. SpaceX, um, Falcon X Heavy, the different, um, the IS, ISS program, the International Space Station that's been out there and, and how we're putting more, um, more people into orbit and, and doing all these experiments. Uh, robotic companies, you know, people and companies who make robotics to do things that humans can't do. Uh, automotive facilities. If you've ever seen or watched a video on how automotives are put together and cars and parts of cars, uh, robots and engineering that goes into all the components of how that works. Uh, it's quite amazing. Defense, Department of Defense, uh, all the different things that our, our countries do to um, protect us and uh, keep enemies away and, and all the engineering aspects that go into that. So with all that lead in, why do we study the four forces acting on an airplane? What, what is, what's so interesting about that? Well, if you've noticed, there's a lot of planes in the air, all right? And if you've ever ridden on a plane, uh, you are unbeknowingly putting your trust into the four forces that are acting on that aircraft uh, in order to get it up into the air, keep it in the air, and safely bring it back down. So the four forces that we're going to talk about are lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. Each of these forces has an opposing force to it. And the word oppose means to work against. Therefore, lift opposes gravity and drag opposes thrust. So if you've watched the lesson on the um, Newton's three laws of, gra uh, three laws of motion, you'll know that those laws that were written almost 300, or discovered, I should say not written, but they were discovered and written down almost 300 years ago, apply to a lot of things that we're going to talk about. So of the four forces that are acting on an airplane, two of them are natural and two are artifi artificial. So the two natural forces are drag and gravity. So think about drag, the best way to describe it is if you're in a pool um, and you're trying to, you know, you're walking across the shallow end or, you know, you're waist deep in the water and you, you're, you've got that restricting force pushing against you. Uh, the faster you try to walk, the more that force is pushing against your body and trying to push you backwards as you're trying to get to the other side of the pool. Uh, this is a natural occurrence when a mass, an object, either your body or something in the water or even in air is pushing against that matter, that other mass, it's going to encounter resistance. Same thing if you're riding a bike and you're 
riding against a strong headwind. It's harder to it's harder to pedal and get yourself through that wind when you're struggling against the force of the wind coming against you. Gravity is kind of the same thing, except we we're, we're at uh, we're at the mercy of gravity in our environment or on our planet. So the natural force that pulls everything towards the center of the Earth is gravity. This is what would pull an airplane back down to Earth. We speak of that force as being 1G. So you think of G-forces and you think of how much gravitational force is being pulled on an object. That's how we measure uh, in Gs that resistance. So the two artificial forces would be thrust and lift. These are forces that are created uh, by something else that's engaged, something else that's happening. So thrust is a force that pulls or pushes an airplane through the air. It opposes drag. So in some airplanes, thrust is provided by a propeller. In others, it's provided by a jet engine. This force is artificial because it takes mechanical energy Ah, there's a buzz term we've used in another lesson, mechanical energy, like an, L, uh, like an engine or a propeller, to generate the thrust it needs. So lift is also artificial because it's a force that requires mechanical energy to create pressure changes discussed earlier in Bernoulli's Law. To put it into practical terms, when an airplane is ready to take off, the pilot adds the power, which is the thrust, and the machine moves forward. The relative wind starts to flow under and over the wings. The wings are a mechanical device. They are being forced to move through the air like a fluid. So now we're in the air. Our plane is flying and we're at an altitude. So what's next? Well, there are three axes that a plane can fly on. There's a vertical axis, a lateral axis, and a longitudinal axis. So imagine if you're an aeronautics engineer and one of your jobs, and this is kind of a weird looking plane here, but is to hang a plane uh, on a cable from the ceiling. All right. If you've been to some air museums, the Smithsonian or uh, the Aerospace Museum in Dayton, Ohio, you see these things hanging from the, from the, <laughs> from the rafters and uh, they're just dangling in space. So let's say you're there and uh, your job was to hook one of these on well, on a string like this. So when you're looking at the vertical axis, this is our red line. So that's the axis going down through the plane. So when we turn it like this, that's one axis. It's called our vertical axis. Now visualize, visualize a line that goes from wingtip to wingtip. All right, passes through the center and the cable is still suspending it. This side is called the lateral the lateral axis, that's our blue line, all right? So imagine now we have a second axis. So there's our first axis, which was our vertical, our lateral, and now the green one, all right? The green one now uh, is our longitudinal, longi, longi, longitudinal, longitudinal, I guess. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, it's kind of a hard word to say. So those are the three axes that a plane is going to act on, all right? If you hook the cable to the point where all three of these would come together, this would be called your center of gravity, all right? Right in there somewhere is your center of gravity. And we're going to talk about that later uh, in another lesson. All right, so how does this work then in an airplane? So the three forces that we, I'm sorry, the three um, axes that we talked about, um, are going to be used uh, or controlled by the pilot. If we're going to fly this plane and we want the nose to go left or right, that is called our yaw. And again, that's going to be controlled uh, by the foot pedals uh, that you see there on the screen uh, by, by the pilot. So moving from side to side in that position is called our yaw because you figure our nose is right here, our tail is right here. And if you uh, see this in our lab, uh, you're going to make one of these so you'll be able to get a better idea of what that's going to look like. All right. If we're going to roll, if we're going to roll left and right, imagine if you walked out on the wing and you kind of pushed it down like this. All right. You're going to roll left and right. So if you see a plane and it's 
kind of doing a little, you know, it's doing a roll. It's going to change its, its angle. All right, change its degrees. All right, that's how that would work. That's called roll. So our nose up and down would be called our pitch. So imagine if you're sitting on the nose and someone else is back here and you're pushing this back and forth. That is called your pitch. So your pitch is going to determine if your plane is going to go up or down. Your roll is going left and right. And your yaw is going side to side. So a pilot is able to control all three of these angles by manipulating the, um, the yoke, which we see here, um, by moving that in a direction, either forward or backwards, left or right. And the pedals or the rudder controls um, are being used uh, left or right, back and forth to move the nose as the pilot needs to maneuver the airplane uh, in one of the three axes. So here's what that looks like practically from uh, more of a visual standpoint. So if you look at the, uh, the wing tip itself, all right, going back to my, my little demonstration here, if you look at that airplane, uh, the wing tip is uh, when, that, when the ailerons uh, are moving, uh, that is, uh, sorry, that is going to create our roll, uh, depending on which, which way or how those ailerons are moving, uh, downward or upward. Um, if one is down and one is up, then you're going to get a roll feature. All right. Same with the nose, nose right and nose left. Uh, depending on how those pedals are compressed, it's going to give us a side to side movement. And finally, up and down, that nose going up and down is our pitch. And again, that's uh, being uh, used as the um, rudder, I'm sorry, the um, yoke is being moved forwards and backwards. It's going to create that pitch that we see. So that is a basic understanding of the forces of flight. I hope uh, this helped you a little bit as you go into the labs and as you've seen the other presentations in this lesson. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on this. Uh, I love to hear things uh, from folks that watch this. And if you have, uh, um, you want to see more of this kind of content, you can go to yourtechnologycoach.com. And there's a, a ton of other STEM and uh, STEM lessons out there, as well as technology-based information. And uh, thank you for watching again. And we'll see you in one of our next, next lesson videos. Thanks a lot. Want to get children excited about math and science? Need a little help with teaching a lesson? Then check out the affordable STEM courses at myhomeschoolvillage.com. Our very own science and technology coach teaches in a fun and interactive way, all while using low-cost and household items. Six easy-to-do lessons with simple experiments are combined with video lessons and worksheets for a more engaging experience which helps students to retain the content. Lessons include, what is matter, exploring forms of energy, applying electricity to make circuits, forces of flight and aerodynamics, and rockets and space flight. Each course is designed and taught by an experienced classroom STEM instructor, using real-world science experiments to help the student understand the content and apply the lessons. Click the link in the description for a special offer and details on My Homeschool Village and the STEM Interactive Courses.